this school links video recording, we will learn how to use the resume building feature in school links. To access the resume building feature, click on your name in the top right hand corner in the green bar. That will take you to the profile section in school links. In the profile section at the top, you will see write a headline, write an objective, and then on the left side, social media or social accounts. These are optional features that you can include on your resume. You do not have to include a headline or an objective unless you want to. I do not actually recommend that you include your social media accounts unless you have a professional social media account tied to a business venture you have started while you're in high school. Something like you do your nails or you do makeup training sessions or you do um, you have your own clothing line, something of those lines. Um, otherwise, I would not include your social media accounts on your resume. If you do include a social media account, it needs to only show the professional posts that you have made. It cannot be or should not be a combination of your personal social media and your professional social media. It should be only your professional social media accounts. The next section is your story section. You can include goals. This isn't something that's going to appear on your resume. If you do, this is for personal knowledge and growth. The section that you're going to start with for your resume section is going to be the experience section. In the experience section, this is where you can include your jobs, internships, volunteer experiences that you've had, as well as your extracurricular activities and your leadership roles. The first section you'll be entering information for is the job, internship, and volunteer experience. To add a new entry, you click on the plus, add a new entry. When you're entering your jobs, internships, or volunteer experience opportunities, you want to put the information in reverse chronological order. This means whatever you did the most recently goes at the top and then you work down through the past. So it's reverse chronological order. So the most recent activity and then you work your way down. Remember on your resume, only put things that you have done while you're in high school. Colleges or employers are not really interested in what you did in middle school or before. Um, life began in high school, so kind of think of it that way. When you are entering the information into your experiences, you are going to put your position type, then you're going to put your position title, if it was an internship, maybe you were a file clerk or where you were a candy striper, um, were in your um, volunteer opportunity, maybe you were um, check in person. Um, if it was a job, maybe you were an assistant manager or a um, server, whatever the position title was, you will put that there. You will include the organization name and then you will enter what you did in that position. When you are entering your responsibilities while serving in that position, you wanna use what we like to call complete sentence fragments. Do not use first person. When you are writing, you wanna write with proper grammar, but it's not necessarily going to be an actual complete sentence. Complete sentence fragments, shortened to the point, but using proper grammar. You're gonna list each role or responsibility, responsibility per line because it will automatically bullet once you hit enter. And you will enter the next one. To remove that line, you simply click the delete button. You will then enter the start date and end date for that position. When you are entering the dates, if you don't know the exact date, get as close as you possibly can. Then you would hit save and you would in that you would see the experience post here. Now let's say you get everything entered in and you realize that you have something that is out of order. If that's the case and you enter something out of order, you're not going to be able to fix it in this section. But when you download your resume to a Word document and you are ready to save it, 
you will be able to manipulate that Word document and you'll be able to rearrange things that need to be rearranged there. Once you've completed your job, internships, and volunteer experience section, you will then go down to your extracurricular activity section. You really want to make sure that you are highlighting your uh, leadership roles that you have had in every single position. So you want to make sure that you include that information in the section. To add the entry, click add entry. Make sure that you put the long name of the organization. So if you are in NHS, you would put National Honor Society and then you would put NHS at the end in parentheses. List your position. If you've had multiple positions in this organization, you can list all of the positions at one time or you can enter an entry for each position for that organization. My recommendation is if you are in multiple organizations, just put each position in one entry. So you would separate those positions um, by a semicolon, which is the dot, then the comma. So that's a semicolon. Once you've entered all of the information and you're going to click on the save button. For the weekly time spent, you can kind of guesstimate how much time you have spent for that organization each week while you are in the organization. You do want to make sure you put the grade that you started that organization in. And if you are still continuing in that organization and you intend to participate in that organization while you're in college, you can choose the I, I intend to participate in this activity while in college. You would then save and it will enter that organization on here. You can include interests and hobbies. And then you want to make sure that if you have any sort of certifications or licensures that you include this information on your resume, that is imperative information on your resume and will show the college or the employer how trainable you are and how motivated you are. You type in the name of the certification that you have and then hit enter to add it and then you would save. You also want to put in your bragging rights, so your achievement and awards, honor roll, AB honor roll, um, a, uh, all A honor roll, perfect attendance, any sort of award or honor. If you're an athlete and you were named to all district or all states, anything, any sort of honor or award that you have received while you were in high school, make sure you include that information. Let's say you have a specific skill set. You can type a certain number of words a minute. Um, are you bilingual? You can enter that information here. Under academics, this is where you will enter your information about how well you have done while you were in high school. If you would like to include your test scores, that is fine. My recommendation is only include test scores if you have a 1360 on the SAT or higher and a 30 on the ACT or higher. For your GPA, if you have a 3.5 unweighted GPA or higher, then you can include that. If you have below a 3.5 unweighted GPA, I would not recommend including that information on your resume. So for test scores, 1360 or higher on the SAT, 30 or higher on the ACT, and for your GPA, a um, 3.5 or higher to update and include additional information on the school section in your resume, you can click on the edit pencil and you can add additional information. So you can put the year you started. It should be preset to the year you graduate. You can add your G GPA in these areas and your class rank. For your class rank, we only recommend entering your class rank if you are in the top 10% or above. If you are below the top 10%, we would not recommend that you include that information. Once you are satisfied with the information in your education section, you would hit save. And now you are ready to download your resume. To download your resume, you click on the resume link on the right side of the screen. You will then enter your phone number, your home address, and your email address. 
If your email address is not a professional email address, we recommend that you go to one of the free email services and create a new email address. Your email address needs to be a professional email address, especially when you start writing it down on paper for a college or a job to look at. So if you do not have a professional email address, it is recommended that you go to one of the free email services that are out there and create a professional email address. First name dot last name, first name underscore last name, uh, last name underscore first name, some sort of combination of your first and last name in a professional setting. Then, once you've entered that information, you will click on download resume. It will take a moment for the resume to populate and then the resume will download into a Microsoft Word document. When the resume is ready, you will first see it in the top right hand corner your resume is ready to download from School Links. Click here to download. Then it will populate at the bottom left hand of the screen and you can open up your Microsoft Word resume. This is where you will be able to make any edits and changes to your resume. It is perfectly okay for your resume to be more than one page. There is nothing wrong with a student resume being more than a page long. That is perfectly okay. You will likely need to make some edits. You wanna make sure that there is balance on the left and right side of your resume. You can see that here I have balance on each side of my resume. You'll also notice that on the bottom of my resume where it says achievements and awards, that this is broken into the next page. If when you will look at your resume, you see something like this, then we would recommend that you just go in, press enter a couple of times and move that section to the next page. That way it doesn't break it up at the beginning. You can make any additional edits that you need. If you needed to move some things around, you can move some things around. If you wanted to add additional information, you can add additional information on this because this is a Word document that you are able to save to your own computer. You'll also be able to see any errors in spacing and things like that. For example, if I look at where it says additional information certification, I can see that I have an extra space between certification and the comma. I need to correct that. Same thing for the Microsoft Office Suite. I have an extra space there, so I need to correct that. So it's important to go through and look at the errors and the grammar and the punctuation recommendations that Microsoft is making to you. When you go to save it, you want to save it as your first, last, first name and last name, and then resume. You can give it a rev number, so um, revision one, revision two, revision three, but you wanna give it a professional name on it when you save it, because if you email this resume, to someone, they will see what the name of that uh, resume is in the attachment. So you don't want it to have some silly little name in the attachment. You want it to have a professional name. So first, last name, resume, Rev1, something like that. This is how you use the resume building feature in School Links to create a resume. Then you would download and save it to your, um, your computer, your laptop, or your OneDrive account through Microsoft 365.